welcome to Bar Mills. This is going to be our page to page for uh, both of uh, Merchants Row and Rickety Cove because these buildings that we're going to do right now are going to be within both of those us uh, uh, kits. So we're going to start with the first one, which is Ma Jenkins, and that is the small building on the far end, which is our hotel that we use at the very end of Merchants Row. So let's go and start um, looking at this page by page. So what we're going to do is actually, so people, you don't understand this, we're taking the instructions, we're going through it page by page and see what we've run into when we built it the first, very first time and what suggestions we have for you to build it. So on your first page, as I showed you before, we got a nice picture of the building here on the very left here and end is the one we're going to do, Ma Jenkins Boarding House. Um, it's a little more intricate than most of the buildings, but we thought it would do this one because it's a, a very interesting building. So the first, that's the very front page um, of this section. And um, let's go to the next page. And the next page shows us uh, a bunch of uh, elevations of the building, all four elevations, all four sides. Again, this building has got four sides, so you can build it within the confines of our diorama or one that you want to do yourself. So it shows uh, where the signs go, uh, where the chimneys go. Uh, pretty pretty good directions. It's a quick, quick uh, synopsis of what you're going to build. And let's move on to the next page. The next page has a nice color picture and it has a couple more drawings, one from above and some isometric drawings of three sides of the building, um, which is great because this isometric drawing kind of give you an idea of it in 3D. Um, th these, this is, building is kind of interesting because this building has a uh, scribe siding, board and batten, it's got roofing, brick chimneys, it's got wooden steps and, and stairways. So it's got a little bit of everything for you to do and a little bit of techniques you can try on all these different types of, of, of uh, techniques to use for building the kit. It has a couple dormers on the top. Um, it's a very interesting little building. The next page is a page with, that shows you all of the cut sheets that has all of the, the pieces for the kit. And they're all numbered. Um, they're pretty straightforward. It kind of tells you where you can go and find this particular piece that you need when you're reading through the instructions. And that's a pretty straightforward. The next page, it tells us now we're getting into the building of the kit. So we're going to go through interior bracing, and then it goes through a couple of the three primary sub-assemblies. Sub it shows you where to put your bracing, how to put your doors and windows together. And these are pretty straightforward from all the kits we do. They are uh, laser cut windows and they are laser cut doors. And they're just in multiple sections. And if you just follow the, the uh, directions here, they go together very well. Just remember when you're putting some of these windows and doors together, make sure you paint them first. It's way easier to paint or stain them first. Do a little weathering on them and then put them together. It's much, much easier than trying to go back and paint them afterwards. And then we have a small assembly called the front entrance assembly. The, the only thing you want to be careful with this one is the number 19 piece, and it's the front wall. The very thin piece across the bottom is very thin, so you want to be careful with that. If you need a solution to fix that, um, take a piece of regular uh, printer paper and glue it to the back of the piece, piece of wood, and that'll hold it together a little bit from breaking. It's a very small piece, and you got to be careful if you're going to stain it with any kind of stain or wash. So be careful of that very piece across the very bottom under the door. Other than that, that assembly goes together quite easily, quite well. It's not a big assembly, but it's a, the first um, real detailed part of the kit that you're going to run into. Let's turn the page, and what we're gonna look at is um, the steps and the upper porch. There's a porch halfway up where the people enter into the upper section of the hotel. And it shows how to put together the um, decks, um, how to brace them, how to put the braces that hold them up. Just remember again, you wanna stain all this stuff ahead of time. Make sure you get it all stained up. The other thing is when you're staining things, if you glue things together first and then stain them, sometimes the stain doesn't go where the glue is and you can have slotches, botches of bare, bare wood. So you don't wanna do that. You wanna stain the material first. And that's very easy to do. You can do it right on the bench. 
The next assembly that we have is our stairs, and there are our quick steps. So if you go, just follow the directions right here. Um, again, you can paint these afterwards if you want, but um, I would suggest you stain them ahead of time or paint them ahead of time, depending on which way you want to do it. Um, they glue together. Make sure you give them plenty of time for the glue to dry. Then you can cut them off the sprues, and they're pretty strong once they're once that glue is dry. And then you can uh, uh, put them aside, and then when it comes time to add them to your your finished model, uh, you'll have plenty of plenty of uh, stuff just to stick on it. It'll be great. It, that's when it starts to really get fun. Uh, the next one, you go the next page. You're going to have an isometric view of the four sides of the main building and how they go together. They go go together pretty straightforward. Um, it shows you here. You can if you want, you can add your uh, corner boards, if you're going to go with a different color corner board, um, which we did, we did with a different color. We added them after we had painted or stained the walls. Um, and you can put them on at two different times. Some people put them on once you've got the four walls together. Some people do it when the end ones are flat. And then you want to put them on and then trim them, let them hang over a little bit, and trim them the angle of the of the end of the wall. Like on the gable end, you're going to trim them to the gable end and the bottom. So make them a little longer, not a lot, but just enough to trim off, and they'll come out really flush with the top and the bottom. We're using a different kind of shingle on this building. We're using a, it's a paper shingle, but it's called a square wave shingle. And it starts halfway up the wall, which is very interesting. Um, it's staggered like any other shingle um, from mid-center of the next shingle. So you go from the end to the mid-shingle, end to mid-shingle, end to mid-shingle, all the way up till you get it completely right up to the top. Um, and we painted it a gray color and then highlighted it with dry, dry brushing a light gray color over the top, which highlighted the, the, uh, the way the shingle actually sticks out. So it gives you, he'll have a picture of that. You can see that. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you then cut your windows out or go around your windows. It depends upon which way you like to do it. Um, you're going to cover your corners on the top. So you want to cut those off as you go. Let them overhang a little bit in the end. Cut them off with, flip it over and cut them off with the, the, the knife. Um, do it before you put your windows in. It's much easier. Uh, okay, let's go to the next page. Um, the next page is you're going to add the roof. I have a suggestion with the roof is these combs that we have for the uh, rafter tails fit into the slots. If you take a piece of like a 20, uh, 220 sandpaper, fold it in half and just kind of slide it through the slots a little bit, it opens them up just a little bit and makes it so much easier for these combs to drop right in. It doesn't take a lot of that sanding, just a little bit and they'll slide right in and then you're going to glue them to the roof and you're also going to add your front vestibule at the same time. And then you're going to add your roof, which you're going to put what they call, I call them uh, strips of, of laser board. So you're going to do standing seam roof, what it's going to look like. So put those in and then you can paint them after you do that. You can do that when they're flat. The only thing you can't do when they're flat is the, the, the peak of the roof where the cap goes on. You can do that later after you've got your roof in, in position. You're going to put the upper porch in. And you're gonna do. You're gonna also do the roof. I'm sorry. Over the little addition in the front. You're gonna do the same, same as the top and the bottom. Um, we painted ours a green, and I stippled some bond red on to represent rust, and then I used a little powder over the top of that to give it a little texture when it was still damp. Real simple. If you look at the pictures, you'll see it. You can kind of replicate that. We go over that in other other areas too. You're gonna add the middle, the middle porch. Uh, deck that goes right on. It goes into a slot. Make sure it fits tight in the slot. Um, once you get that little deck in, you're going to go to the next one, which you're going to do the entryway for the upper level entryway. Don't forget to paint the inside of the entryway. It, the entryway doesn't have a door on it, so you see inside that. So you want to paint that before inside, maybe a light color. Um, and it's tab and, and slot. It goes right in and you uh, put your door in first. It's got a small roof on it. And you're done. The next page shows us doing your what we call um, rake boards, which are just under the inside edge of the roof against the wall. Don't forget to put those on. Paint those first. Much easier to paint them first. And then you're going to put the two. You're going to assemble the two dormers. 
Um, and they go together pretty straightforward. Make sure you paint and uh, do whatever you want to do with either paint or stain them and get your roof on your dormers done the same as you've done the rest of the roof. You will have to trim out your strips on the roof itself. This, the strips, you want to cut it out so the dormer fits in. Um, that's pretty much on the roof. Um, we're going to go to the lower, there's a lower landing for the stairway that goes up to the to the second story. Um, there's two posts that goes from the ground all the way up that hold this up. I had a little problem just getting them to stick to the edge of the um, beam that they want went up against. So you had one be you know, one like this hitting the other. I cut a little pieces of uh, gussets on either side and it made it so it fit between the piece, the cross beam fit between the upright and just held it in place while I got it perfectly straight. It was very easy to do that way. So if you want to try that, you're welcome to try that. That's really easy. It's just a scrap piece of material that I used uh, to get it to get it to actually go to hold together well while the glue dry. So on the next page, it's a lot of the detail stuff that you're adding now to, to, the, to the building. You've got the steps. It's going to show you how to put the steps in um, piece by piece. Um, you're going to put the steps in. Then you're going to put the railings in. You're going to add your chimney on the back. Don't forget to paint your chimneys and weather your chimney long before you put it on. It's so much easier to do it right on the bench than it is on the model itself. You're going to put your railings in. Shows you that. They're all straightforward. There are notches for them. They fit right in pretty nicely. And then you're going to cut a uh, two by four material for the top of your rails. That gives you a handle going down your rails. And then basically you're done for, uh, you're going to add some of your signs and maybe some touch up work on your paint. The last page you're going to see is a whole page of uh, signs. Um, it's got a lot of the signs for a lot of different buildings. You're going to pick out the ones that are for this building. You're going to use the hotel and the room daily and weekly signs. Those are about the only ones that go on this particular building. Um, the other buildings are all on this one sheet. So you're going to have to pick off the ones you need for your hotel. So take your time. Um, follow the instructions. Um, it's really not a really difficult building, but it does take some attention to detail to make sure you get it square and you get it um, plumb is what we call plumb is vertical. Um, so you get your stairways and those to fit right. Tab and, tab and slot work really well to help us align things. Um, make sure you do your painting and your staining first. I can't, you know, emphasize that. So this is about what we have for this particular building. Um, if you have any questions, you can always give us an email or something like that. We can probably answer them pretty quick. Um, but I think you should be pretty, pretty well with the directions to get this building put together. It didn't take me that long to do, um, and it was fun to do. I like doing this building. Well, thanks for watching. That's what we need to know. We'll see you on the next page to page.